from the Opupco Studios in Oklahoma City, you're watching The Press Row. We're brought to you by Papa John's. I'm Jenny Carlson, here with Barry Trammell. Time for 5 and 5. We've got five topics, five questions. Let's get right to it here. Barry, big question going around right now. Who the heck should be OU's quarterback? Well, I'm going to say Blake Bell for two reasons. One, we've seen Blake play well this season. He's, he started four games. He was very good in two of those. Uh, excellent against Tulsa. Uh, very good against Notre Dame, the first quarterback at OU to beat Notre Dame in 56 years. So, uh, two rough games in a row for Blake Bell, but we know that he has done it well in, against quality competition. I don't want to see a lot of instability. I think uh, that could lead to a bigger mess. I would stay with Blake Bell at this point. Yep, I'm throwing my support behind Blake Bell being the quarterback as well. And, you know, I just... <laughs> I just didn't see enough out of Trevor Knight. There was one quarter in the opener where I thought he threw it pretty well, but everything else pointed to the fact that he just doesn't throw it that well. Now, maybe that will improve. We heard all preseason after he was named the starter just how well he threw it in practice. So maybe it's a game time thing. Maybe when the lights come on, he's just not able to throw it as well, and it'll just take more time and development. But I didn't see it. And Blake Bell, I've seen it. Now, last week against Texas, didn't see it. But I think he can do it. So I think stick with Blake Bell. Just uh, I think they got to get him. The run game got to get going again for the quarterback. You got to open that up a little bit. And I, they've got to hit some downfield passes, Barry. They got to open up the offense, let the run game breathe a little bit by hitting some of those deep shots every once in a while. Hey, what about OSU, Barry? Can OSU, hey, I forgot the bell, still win the Big 12? Um, I'm going to say no on OSU, and it's not because of where they are in the standing. It's not because of who's come up, who's fallen. It's none of that. I just haven't seen the Cowboys play well enough to do it. I mean, uh, very poor at West Virginia, just so-so against Kansas State. Uh, Cowboys are going to have to show me that they're better than what, they've, than what they've presented themselves. It's going to take a good team to win the Big 12. Not necessarily a great team, but it is going to take a good team, and I don't know that the Cowboys have played to that level yet. Well, can OSU still win it? I say yes, and I say yes because of their defense. Their offense has not been good. Their offense has been disappointing in their Big 12 games. There's no two ways around that. It's been very un-OSU-like. But... Their defense is really good, folks. I mean, you know, it's not the standard operating procedure in the Big 12 these days to have a defense that wins ball games for you. But this is a defense that has won a game or two for Oklahoma State, and I think they could potentially do that again. So can they win it? Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure they will, but the schedule does set up for them pretty well, too. So they got some things going in their advantage if they can just get a little bit of offensive production. All right, Barry, what about this? Hey, speaking of that Big 12 race, who is the front runner in the Big 12 right now? Well, I'm going to go with, by default, the Baylor Bears. Uh, three unbeatens in now in the uh, Big 12, so you got to say Texas Tech, Texas and Baylor have the most mathematical chance to win it. But uh, I don't like Texas because we've seen them play poorly until Saturday in the Cotton Bowl. Tech, I'm just not a believer. Baylor has not been proven, but at least they haven't been disproven. So <laughs> uh, I'm going to stay with Baylor right now. And uh, the problem we have with these prognostications is most of the good matchups are backloaded in November. So we're not going to know much until the month of November. Hey, and the Big 12 did a great job with scheduling to really push those important games to the end of the year. It's going to make for a fantastic, I think, last month of the season, unless these teams that we feel like are in contention fall apart. We'll see. But I think you got to say the front runner's Baylor. I'm with Barry on this one. Um, I, you know, Oklahoma was until they lay an egg against Texas. I'm not, I can't put Texas in that front runner spot. Oklahoma State not quite there. Texas Tech just not gonna not gonna believe Texas Tech's defense is gonna ultimately hold up. Baylor, I still question their defense. Don't question their offense. That offense seems pretty darn solid. Their defense, a little shaky on the road against K-State. Not, I mean, it's a okay K-State offense, but not a great K-State offense. That defense of Baylor's it's going to have to be a little more solid moving forward if they really want to take that front runner status to championship status. Hey, it's homecoming in Stillwater on Saturday. They say it's the best in the country. It's also homecoming for Peyton Manning on Sunday night as he goes back to Indy. So what's your favorite homecoming story, Barry? I'm 17 years old. I'm about two or three weeks into my career as a sports writer working for the Norman Transcript. They send me up to Deer Creek, which now is a thriving metropolis, but back in 1978, was just a very small, uh, a very small school playing uh, Lexington, 
playing the Lexington Bulldogs. I go up there, cover the game. I'm minding my own business. They have a homecoming uh, ceremony at halftime. They trot out all the queen candidates. I knew one of them. You know her too. Tammy Payne, a longtime <laughs> television personality, uh, now in Oklahoma City for several stations. I went to grade school with Tammy. She moved off. Turns out she moved to Deer Creek. I'm here in the press box able to cheer for a homecoming candidate at a school I've never even been to. Tammy won homecoming queen, and I said to the people in the press box, I knew her win. <laughs> That's pretty good, Barry, That's a good I have story. to admit. Well, and I don't have as many details, but I was covering a game once, and I'm pretty sure it's here in Oklahoma. And if, if this is your school, I hope you'll let me know it's your school. But there's a school out there that I'm pretty sure that the king and queen that won, there's some sort of, must be some sort of unofficial thing where you're, you have to like stay lip, lip locked as long as you possibly can. It was so ridiculously long that it had to be some sort of school tradition. If this is your school, I hope you'll let me know. You, you don't know the school? It, I think it was one of the Moore schools. And if it's not one of the Moore schools, I don't mean to draw you into this, <laughs> but it was so long, it had to have been a setup. It had to have been something that they do every year. It lasted like three minutes, Barry. Well, great day. No wonder mm -hmm. half times are so long. No kidding. Were you not queen at uh, Clay Center? No. You weren't homecoming mm -hmm. queen no. at Clay Center? No. Well, what kind of a nonsensical <laughs> vote was that? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you make that argument later. All right, what about this one, Barry? Let's get back to serious business. Thunder, NBA, who's going to win the Western Conference this year? I'm going to go with Memphis. I like what they've. I like their team. I like what they've done. They've uh, they've shed salary at the end of last year with Rudy Gay. They've been able to patch it together and keep their core. Uh, finish last year strong, beating the the, the West Brookless Thunder, then uh, playing the Spurs in the West Finals. So I like Memphis. Uh, I don't think Memphis will finish number one in the regular season, but I do think they get out of the West. Well, I think the West is definitely, uh, there's about five or six teams that I think could all conceivably, if things go right, they could win the West. I'm going to go with the Spurs because why not? The Spurs seem to win it every year, so why would I not pick the Spurs? Okay, they don't win it every year, but it just seems that way. Um, really feels like every year they get picked to finish fourth or maybe third and then they finish at the top. So I'm just going to go with the Spurs to start with and say that's who's going to win. But it's going to be a lot of fun to see how this West shakes out with Westbrook hurt, with a new coach in Memphis, uh, new Doc Rivers, new coach in, in, in L.A. with the Clippers. We're going to be previewing all of that, by the way, in our preseason Thunder preview section. Sunday, October 27th, we'll have our picks for Western Conference winner, NBA champion. You're going to want to check that out. And then hold it to it, hold us to it. See see how we do on our picks as the season goes on. Be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at newsok.com and every day in the Oklahoman.